Throughout the 20th century, America began to expand its influence and spread its democratic ideals throughout the world. Pearl S. Buck, a novelist by occupation but humanitarian at heart, saw the struggle faced by the children of many Asian countries and was driven to find them a new home through her adoption agency called Welcome House. However, when the Korean War ravished the cities of South Korea, it separated families and left thousands of children living on the streets, creating a need for adoption in Korea. Pearl S. Buck's effort to decrease stigma towards biracial adoption and her effort to help these children would result in a new view on international adoption, as well as the placement of thousands of Korean children in American homes. Pearl S. Buck was raised in China and spent half of her life there. Growing up as a white girl in China caused Buck to often be mistreated because she was different from the other children. As a result, she became determined to never let another child experience discrimination. Her Chinese upbringing also contributed to her cultural beliefs. Known for her books on Asian culture and for being the first American woman to win the Nobel Prize, Buck was an advocate of cross-cultural understanding as well as Asian rights. She wanted Americans to understand cultural differences and appreciate them rather than belittle them. While her experiences in Asia greatly shaped her views on Asian culture, Buck's views on family would be shaped by her child, Carol. When she gave birth to her first child, she was disheartened to learn that Carol would have to be institutionalized most of her life due to a metabolic disease. Because of a tumor discovered during birth, Buck had to undergo a hysterectomy, making her unable to have any more children. Because of this, Buck turned to adoption and became very sympathetic to other families who couldn't have children. Buck adopted several children, many who were of mixed race, However, when she saw that many adoption agencies refused to place children who were biracial or from Asia, she decided to take action. They couldn't get me placed. Uh, American families, white American families, didn't want me because you know my my skin was brown, and Indian families didn't want me because I was half American, and in their culture, that was uh, I was considered an outcast. And so the adoption agent contacted Pearl Buck she would take me in and she would start like the Welcome House Adoption Agency as a result of that. In 1949, she founded the Welcome House Adoption Agency with the help of author James Michener. Due to her strong belief in racial harmony, cultural understanding, and that families were formed by love, not race, religion, or nation, she made Welcome House's primary focus to be on children of mixed race, particularly from Asian countries. In 1950, war broke out in Korea. The U.S. became greatly involved in the conflict and sent American troops over to aid South Korea. The war deeply affected the citizens of South Korea. Families were separated, some finding themselves on opposite sides of the 38th parallel. And by the end of the war in 1953, over 3 million civilians were killed or missing and more than 100,000 children were left homeless. Many of the war orphans were biracial, the children of American soldiers and Korean women. These children were looked upon negatively by South Koreans, they were known as the dust of the streets and were often abandoned by their mothers who also faced harsh criticism from society. There were attempts to help the children. Before the war, adoption was not common in Korea, but as soldiers evacuated children out of the country, provided them with food and clothing, and set up orphanages, the adoption process slowly began to develop. In 1956, Harry Holt, the founder of Holt International, adopted eight children from South Korea. This event was publicized all over America, sparking interest in Korean adoption. Adoption became a primary social policy for orphan children in Korea, especially due to the fact that Korea wanted to get rid of the biracial children. Buck's adoption agency stood out from other agencies like Holt International. Not only was it the first adoption agency to focus primarily on biracial children, it also did not fall victim to the Christian Americanism movement. When deciding if a family was eligible to adopt, Harry Holt looked for a certain kind of Christian household rather than considering whether or not they were truly a good home for a Korean child. Buck criticized this by saying it wasn't right to base placement on religion, especially if a different family who might not fit the Christian image was more fitting for a child, once again showing her belief that family should be based on love. Pearl S. Buck and Welcome House dealt with criticism in both America and South Korea for the way they handled the orphan children. Racism towards Asians was extremely prominent in American society, so Buck's stance on adopting children of different races and her focus on biracial children caused many to criticize her. But rather than giving up, Buck instead continued to fight profusely for the acceptance of biracial adoption. As an extension to Welcome House, Buck established the Pearl S. Buck Foundation and Opportunity Center in South Korea and eventually in other Asian countries. These children were not permitted to enjoy um, economic 
social, educational uh, things that most children are afforded. So she opened up this foundation so that uh, she could give them a better chance at life. She provided them education um, and training so that they could use these things to build better lives for themselves. The foundation was greatly criticized by Korean news outlets who said that it ignored the existing social welfare programs in Korea, exaggerated numbers of mixed race children in Korea, and claimed to be the only agency that cared about the welfare of children. However, Buck refuted these allegations. Not only did she directly help the children, she also indirectly helped them by inspiring other adoption agencies and advising them to include biracial adoption in their methods. Through this, Buck was able to gain the help of other agencies in her attempts to decrease prejudice towards biracial children. While there were people in both America and South Korea who were against adoption, there were also those in each country that agreed this adoption was necessary. South Korea didn't want the children, and lots of Americans did. Due to the factors such as birth control and abortion, there were less unwanted white children born in America, causing childless couples to turn to Korean adoption. The South Korean government also strongly opposed communism, therefore they did not want Korean children to be taken into the surrounding communist countries. This made America the best choice for adoptees to go to. Buck's efforts to counter the influx of biracial orphans in Korea as well as the efforts of other adoption advocates greatly paid off. At the beginning, the U.S. was limited to allowing 100 Korean children in the United States annually due to the McCarran-Walter Act. But because of the work of Pearl S. Buck and other adoption advocates, the U.S. and South Korea came to an agreement to instate several laws to allow for easier adoption of Korean children. In South Korea, the government began legalizing overseas adoption through an agency under the Ministry of Social Affairs, thus institutionalizing the international adoption of Korean children. In the U.S., the Refugee Relief Act of 1953 was passed and brought in people from other countries who were considered displaced persons facing emergency. By 1961, Korean children eventually received the largest share of orphan visas. As support for Korean adoption grew, another law was passed in 1957 which authorized the entry of an unlimited amount of orphan visas up to the age of 14 for two years. Finally, in 1961, a law was put in place that made non-quota visas permanently available to foreign orphans and ensured the continuation of the growing adoption industry in Korea. From 1955 to 1961, 4,190 biracial Korean and full Korean children came to the United States. Slowly, Korean adoption became more accepted in America as people sympathized with GI babies, seeing them as helpless and innocent orphans who needed to be saved. Although the adoption that took place after the Korean War was a temporary fix to the war orphan problem, the effects remained strong. International adoption had become so common that there was a belief that South Korea's greatest export was babies. As a result, South Korea made it more difficult for children to be adopted internationally to prove that they can take care of children of their own country. But through Welcome House and other adoption agencies, over 150,000 children have been adopted from Korea to America since the war, several hundred being adopted through Welcome House. Many war orphans were saved from lives of poverty and neglect, and families became whole. The Welcome House philosophy, advocating for multicultural understanding, has become widely accepted. It helped make people aware of the struggles many Korean War orphans and other children from different countries face. The tragedy of the Korean War left thousands of children homeless, and the stigma that existed in both South Korea and America towards these children, many biracial, was strong. But the existence of Welcome House and advocates like Pearl S. Buck helped weaken this prejudice by fighting for acceptance of these children and caused the governments of both the United States and South Korea to agree on international adoption. Pearl S. Buck's views on racial harmony and multiculturalism were strongly shown through the establishment of Welcome House and its values, impacting thousands of war orphans as well as millions of others around the world who have benefited from the Pearl S. Buck Foundation. Her efforts to make the world a better place by advocating for widespread acceptance of one another, regardless of race, ethnicity, religion, and nationality, will never be forgotten by the children whose lives have changed because of her.